Okay, uh, hi noon. So uh, let's get started with uh, this uh, webinar session, Project Management, uh, Career Positioning, Coursework Experience Certification. Uh, I'm Leonard Nethercutt. First, I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, webinar session. I know you have many uh, competing time interests, and uh, so I want to thank you for attending uh, this uh, webinar session. My uh, objectives, my uh, an overview of the session quickly is to take a look at uh, project management jobs outlook then we're going to uh, take a look at uh, PMI certification we're going to look primarily at the uh, PMP project management professional certification just a quick glance at the uh, uh, cer certified associate in project uh, management we'll also take just a quick overview or glance of project management body of knowledge and then we'll connect PMBOK and the MSOM project management courses. Kind of look at the parallels to see how they are uh, similar in terms of content and then we'll also take a look at a little more in depth at a couple of the MSOM project management courses the OMGT 5783 course uh, the name project management for operations managers uh, as well as the OMGT 5983 course advanced project management and we'll also I'll also briefly mention this is kind of uh, uh, breaking news project management graduate certificate will soon become available through the MSOM department and I have some information about that project management graduate certificate and finally we will close the session with uh, closing thoughts and questions. Now, first, you may notice uh, I'm going to turn my uh, camera off here in just a second, just so uh, there will not be any distractions. Uh, uh, video typically requires a little more uh, bandwidth than uh, not having the video, but uh, you'll notice I have brought my lunch. I stopped at McDonald's on the way to the uh, uh, classroom, and I picked up a uh, well hamburger fries and a soft drink. And uh, I, I will use those in a, a couple of places in my presentation. So just remember where I got my food from. Okay, so uh, first, kind of the first step. What's a project? It's not in my overview, but I was thinking, well, maybe we should have some, make sure we all have a common ground in terms of what's a project. And I'm going to turn my camera off now. I'm also going to try to share my screen. So hopefully this will go smoothly. I'm going to try to switch over to a web page at the uh, PMI website, Project Management Institute. So uh, bear with me. And here we go. Almost. There. Uh, I'm over at the uh, PMI website, uh, one of their pages, and the page talks about what is project management. And uh, project management is described as a uh, temporary endeavor that has a defined beginning and ending time and a defined scope and resources. So uh, PMI describes it as a temporary endeavor undertaking to create a unique product, service, or result. So now that being said, given the description of uh, project management, there are some characteristics associated with a project. And those characteristics include things like an established objective or a purpose, a defined lifespan with beginning and end. Already mentioned that. It usually involves several departments or areas or professionals. And it's typically doing something that's never been done before. It is somewhat non-routine in nature and has some unique elements. And the fifth characteristic it has specific time, cost, and perform performance requirements. These, uh, these three dimensions or elements determine project success. Did the project come in? on time, on budget, and did it meet its performance objectives. Now, that being said, I'd like to uh, see how seamlessly I can toggle back over to the collaborate session. 
and I've lost my slides, which is, that's not a good thing. There they are. They just popped back up. I guess I was just a little too quick. So uh, first thing I'd like to do is kind of pose a question to uh, those that are attending the uh, session. Uh, given the uh, definition, as well as the characteristics, uh, can you uh, use the text box and provide an example of a project, something that you would uh, describe or classify as a project? I just want to make sure that we're kind of all on the same page when it comes to projects. Does anyone have any thoughts? You can use the text box to respond. If not, I actually have a great list sit sitting here in front of me. Uh, building a deck. Actually, I think that's a good project. Uh, one that I could probably undertake out at my house. All right, good. Oh, uh, uh, electronic medical record. That, that's a great one, James. I appreciate that. Uh, ERP. So uh, if you're not familiar with the ERP acronym, Enterprise Resource Planning. It's a huge undertaking for, a, for an organization. That's a great example. I appreciate y'all's uh, uh, participation there. So. Just over the last few days since I uh, was assigned this uh, webinar session, I've just kind of called ideas as I hear them on maybe TV and the newspaper. And some things that have come up, and uh, one is uh, Starbucks, their order ahead system. Uh, this order ahead system actually came to my attention because it worked so well that they actually have trouble meeting demand. So they're having to go back and uh, examine processes to make process improvements to the way they fill these orders. I uh, heard some information about Toyota hydrogen fuel cars, Facebook money transfers. I heard that Burger King is going to buy Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen. That's a huge uh, integration project. And uh, if you're familiar with, uh, if any of you are from Central Arkansas, which I am from Central Arkansas, there's a highway construct, a bridge construction project. Actually, it's more than a construction; it's a demolition rebuild project over the Arkansas River. Uh, Walmart uh, order pickup. Walmart bought a company called Jet.com to increase online sales. All of these are projects. I'm I'm also participating in a couple of projects. One is what I would call shovel ready, at least as some of the government officials like to call it. Uh, a group out in my area of Faulkner County have been trying to tie on to a, uh, a water line and it's uh, required a substantial amount of effort, time, effort, uh, resources to uh, coordinate all the activities. We are at this point within sight of water coming through the water line. Uh, some other things that kind of uh, understand there's the possibility of a very long wall being built along the southern border, almost 2,000 miles. Project. Okay. Uh, also, uh, recently, McDonald's announced, back to my lunch, thinking about my lunch, uh, they're going to look at implementing a delivery system for their product. And some other local things, uh, maybe not along the lines of really big projects, but important projects for a company net, nonetheless. John Daly Steakhouse is uh, being built in Conway, Arkansas. Uh, I also heard some information about a Bitcoin trading platform. All of these things would qualify as a project. And the success of those projects are measured by being on time, on budget, and meeting the performance requirements. Okay, let's move on. I actually have a uh, quote, a quick quote. Uh, about innovation and the value of project management. It's from uh, Nestle Company. Everybody probably recognizes the Nestle brand name associated with chocolate, but if you read this quote, there are several things that kind of stand out. And I'll just mention these. Uh, great projects delivered by outstanding project management skills. Uh, Outstanding project managers are a must-have ingredient to any successful product innovation. 
and Nestle is increasingly recognizing our project managers because, to me, this is one of the most important parts of the quote, they bring competitive advantage to our organization. So project managers are very important. Now, you may say, well, Nestle, or they make chocolate, but I have to provide a little more information than that. Uh, I hope that each of you had the chance to uh, attend a previous webinar session presented by Professor Roy, and he talked about how innovation is achieved through the 10 OM decisions. And he talked about a couple of examples, SpaceX and Tesla. And these are recognizable in terms of innovations as they are some highly visible, highly uh, high-tech companies. What about Nestle? Innovation is ongoing at Nestle to achieve competitive advantage. So if you take a step back and you look at Nestle, global operations, 190 countries, over 2,000 brands. It's not just a chocolate company. Yes, they do make candy bars and chocolate. What are some other things they make? I don't know if uh, you, you might be familiar with uh, Nestle as a food product company or not. They make some baby food, Gerber. Most of you are probably familiar with that product line. They uh, make some water, uh, the Perrier Pure Life, and they have what's called a chilled frozen food line, which takes up just about an entire freezer aisle in Walmart, or the the retailer that I frequent most, and it includes uh, DiGiorno, Hot Pockets, Jack's Pizza, Lean Cuisine, Stokers, and uh, Tombstone Pizza. It also uh, uh, some other items that Nestle produces, Alpo, Purina, Fancy Feast, and Frisky. Huge company, many product lines, and the quote shows the importance of innovation that is ongoing to achieve competitive advantage through the skills of the project managers. Now, a couple of key points. Uh, project management is the means in which change happens through implementation of strategic objectives, initiatives. The result is that it creates competitive advantage. Nestle mentions product innovation or innovation and change can occur through strategic initiatives or any of the 10 strategic OM decisions. And I don't know if uh, any of you, I'm sure some of you, attended uh, Professor Roy's presentation. He talked about the 10 strategic OM decisions. I think as you look at these 10 strategic OM decisions and relate these back to uh, Nestle or any other uh, company that decisions made within each of these OM decision areas can be uh, strategic in nature, or they can also be another classification of projects is uh, operational type projects, and a, there's a third category called compliance. Now, my McDonald's prop, uh, I'd just like to uh, have you all distinguish between these three type of projects, strategic, operational, and compliance. So if uh, for those of you that were here early on, you probably saw my lunch, my McDonald's sack, and my soft drink. Now this will require some interactions, some uh, text box uh, uh, verbiage uh, from y'all. Can you name a strategic project at McDonald's? Would anybody like to offer a suggestion? There you go, James, you're exactly right. A kiosk during the work, breakfast all day. Yes. Healthy food, <laughs> all of those. And I also read one recently. I, uh, first, thank you all for uh, responding. I also read about another one. Dry, uh, delivery of McDonald's food, oh my. Yes, we have double big backs and all of that now. So uh, yes, thank you all. So we have a design of goods and services. And that is an example of a strategic project. Now, what about an operational project? Can you come up with an idea of a project that is more operational in nature versus strategic? 
you'll probably have to stretch your mind, no, not imagination, but uh, maybe give it some thought. There you go. Vince, I want to thank you for that's the one I was uh, thinking about. I drove through uh, McDonald's, uh, gosh, I'm giving away my favorite eating place, and I looked, watched the uh, auto cup filling process. They had a, the cup would drop down out of a dispenser, it would go on a very short conveyor, it would position itself underneath a uh, 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 the dispenser and it would uh, automatically fill the cup up with the drink that I ordered. Now I didn't place the uh, uh, cup on the or the lid on the cup, but it did fill it up, and that that's an example. Operational typically are uh, related to cost or efficiency related. Now one more question about McDonald's. Can you come up with an idea of a compliance related project? Anybody like to take a shot at that? Okay, <laughs> that's actually a good example. Handicap ramps, I hadn't thought about that one, good one. Uh, I was thinking maybe uh, nutritional type information, if it's required to be, there you go, someone, uh, that's a good one. Thank y'all, y'all took all my uh, uh, ammunition there. I appreciate y'all's uh, <laughs> uh, participation there. So, uh, projects, they don't, you might say, well, what's, what's your point, Nethercutt? Projects don't have to be strategic in nature. They can also be uh, operational in nature or a must-do project that is uh, compliant. It's related. Okay, so let's uh, move on and look at project management jobs outlook. If you're considering uh, project management as a career choice, uh, you would one of the things you'd be interested in is what is the job outlook for project managers and uh, uh, the source of uh, the next three pieces of information is from uh, PMI uh, publications a double digit growth for project management profession uh, professionals expected through 2020 it come, this comes from the project PMI project Talent Gap Report of March 2013. Also, from another publication, Project Management Salary Survey, 9th edition. I should more correctly say Earning Power Project Management Salary Survey. Median U.S. Project Management Salary, $108,200. So, the Demand for project managers is increasing at a relatively healthy rate, and uh, medium salaries are attractive as well. So uh, one question uh, that you might be interested in looking at is, do uh, project managers that have a PMP certification, a project management certification from PMI, do they command a higher salary? And uh, PMI was, uh, has gathered data to support this idea, and it's highlighted there, those with a PMP certification garner a higher salary, 20% higher on average. So there is a relationship between certification, PMP certification, and the uh, earning power of the individual. And the source here, again, it's uh, a, a PMI publication, publication, Earning Power Project Management Survey. And this was as of, I think it was for the year 2015. So it's relatively recent. Okay, so uh, we mentioned certification. Uh, the organization that oversees uh, Certification is uh, Project Management Institute. Typically, it's referred to as uh, PMI, Project Management uh, Institute. And uh, the Project Management Institute is, uh, this is from their website, world's leading project management organization that provides resource certifications to the project management uh, profession. profession. I'm going to uh, take a, a toggle over to uh, the PMI website here in just a minute. 
there are several certifications. I'm going to the primary one I'd like to look at is uh, the PMP certification, Project Management Professional, and I'm just going to spend just a minute looking at the Certified Associate associate in project management. But there are also other specialized project management certifications available. And if you're interested in looking at these other specialized PM certifications, the place to do that is over at the PMI website, pmi.org. All right, so first, let's take a quick look at the project management professional uh, certification. Uh, PMP certification is a globally recognized project management uh, certification. The PMP certification reflects project management knowledge and competencies uh, necessary to direct and lead a project to a successful conclusion. And a success, how do we define success in project management? We define it as bringing a project in on time, on budget, and meeting the desired performance or specification requirements. So the next question, what does a person have to do to set for this PMP examination. What are the requirements? Well, there's three requirements. They are related to educational background, project management experience, and uh, project management education. So uh, you can uh, go with two options are available. PMP certification eligibility. You have to meet these requirements before uh, PMI will allow you to take the PMP exam. So option one or two. Option one, secondary degree, uh, high school associate's degree or global equivalent. And you'll notice if you have one of these uh, lower degrees, then you need more PM experience, 60 months, 7,500 hours. Additionally, you have to have 35 contact hours of project management education. And you can get the 35 contact hours through uh, university uh, courses, uh, uh, remote, uh, distance learning classes, as well as, as other sources. The second option is if you have a higher degree, a four-year degree like a bachelor's or a global equivalent, the PM experience is less, uh, three years, 36 months, uh, with at least 4,500 hours leading and directing the project. And just to, just to emphasize a point, PMP is uh, project managers. You, have, you need to have experience. These hours of experience is as a project manager leading and directing the project. And it also has a PM education requirement. And I mentioned a uh, second certification. It's, I would call it a, a, uh, a certification that's not geared specifically at project managers, but at individuals that are interested in participating uh, in projects. And uh, this certification reflects the individual's just knowledge of project management processes and termination, uh, terminology, I'm sorry. And uh, these it's geared toward uh, individuals that are interested or just starting a, a PM career. The uh, attainment of uh, CAPM certification will increase creditability in the marketplace as a uh, project uh, participant. So what are the requirements? Well, they are le less than the uh, PMP. Two options. You need a secondary diploma for either of the options. You can have uh, either project experience for option one, 1,500 hours. If you don't have that 1,500 hours, you can substitute 23 contact hours of formal uh, project management education. I, I see a question there. We'll uh, hit on those hopefully here in just a few minutes. Okay. 
the uh, certification exams are geared around uh, PMBOK. Uh, PMBOK is the project management uh, body of knowledge. You can look at the organization or structure of uh, PMBOK is uh, knowledge areas and uh, also in uh, process groups. So the uh, 10 project management knowledge areas are generally recognized as good practice. They include common uh, vocabulary uh, and also a project management professional code of ethics. And within each of the uh, 10 project management knowledge area includes uh, one or more processes that, and the processes include uh, skills, or tools and techniques to accomplish the uh, process. And the 10 project management knowledge areas are important in preparation for the certification, but they are also closely linked or related to the core structures in the OMGT program. The OMGT project management courses include, there's a couple of courses, uh, OMGT 5783, which is Project Management for Operations Managers, and 5983, Advanced Project Management. And uh, those are focused on project management, almost exclusively. But there are other OMGT courses that uh, provide uh, ancillary related uh, knowledge information for project management. And those include things like strategic management. We've already mentioned strategic initiatives, organizing for change. Uh, there's an organizing for change webinar session. I think it was three months ago. It was a great session. And there's, there's just a many courses that are available to help a individual become a better project manager. Okay, uh, let's uh, take a, just a quick look. For those of you, it doesn't matter whether you're a student or not. Let's see if I can advance this slide. Whoop, I think I went two slides. Apologies there. Operator error. Uh, first course, OMGT 5783, Project Management for Operations Managers. Uh, this is the course description right out of the uh, course catalog. And I'll show you here in just a few minutes in my closing thoughts about how to go over to the operations management website and access both the course descriptions as well as course objectives. But it, uh, the 5783 class focuses primarily on what's called the technical side of uh, project management. It includes things like uh, project definition, scope, WBS, estimating cost, time, developing sequence, uh, looking at uh, developing a project network, Gantt chart, network computation process, finding the critical path, and uh, calculating slide for individual activities, uh, looking at resource allocation issues and how to resolve those, which leads us to a baseline budget. And then as we execute the project, we have to have the ability to monitor and control the project. So we look at status reports. So there's a lot of technical type information covered in the ONGT 5783 class. But I just want to make a quick point, and that is uh, early on in the class, we do look at the role of strategy and project management. We look at the relationship, the importance of the alignment of a project with strategy and a lot of times that's done with a business case. This is kind of a what you might call pre-project boundary. And we also look at several selection models, both financial as well as non-financial models. And our final end of the course project is to develop a project plan that utilizes almost all of those 10 knowledge areas identified in the 
Second course, advanced project management. This is kind of a sequential course. It builds on what was learned in the project management for operations managers course. And we start, and it, the focus is on troubled projects. We actually look at some articles about success rates of projects and what causes projects to not meet the uh, criteria for success, time, budget, and scope or uh, performance. So we start by looking at some research articles that talk about causes that contribute to not meeting the objectives. And then we take a project plan, while it's in and of itself it's not a big project, but we do have a project plan that is in place, includes all of the elements necessary for a project plan, and the students take that plan and scrutinize it, make suggestions, and then we, the customer wants a scope change. Uh, we have this beginning project, it's in the MS Microsoft Project File, uh, the teams have to make scope changes, develop a new schedule, new cost estimate, and then it's uh, presented to the uh, owner for approval, and then the execution occurs. And then over the execution period, there's a, uh, a two or three monitoring points. At one monitoring point, project is on schedule, it's on budget, nothing needs to be done. And at the next monitoring point, uh, well, things just aren't going quite as well, and students then have to uh, first identify that project objectives are not being met, and they have to devise a plan of action to bring the project back on time and on schedule. So we're trying to uh, try to simulate an actual project to provide experience to the students. Okay, and this is kind of uh, late breaking news. Uh, MSOM is uh, in the process of gaining approval to offer a project management graduate certificate. I've noted there that it's coming soon. Some of the accepted details, at least at this time, is uh, three required courses. They include project management for operations managers, advanced project management, and leadership principles and practices. Those are three required courses. Four courses are required for the project management graduate certificate, which is coming soon. And uh, one of the electives has to occur, has to come from organizing for change, cost estimation models, economic decision making, and quality management. What I'd like to do is to relate this back to the PMI Talent Triangle. Now, it was my intention. I was going to toggle over to the PMI website to show you the uh, triangle. But after my last effort and dismal results to get back into the uh, Collaborate, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you the triangle. And you'll see there are three legs to the triangle. And PMI describes these as the ideal skill set. It includes technical project management. It includes strategic and business management. And it also includes leadership. So hopefully you can see the connection between the PM certificate, the project management graduate certificate, and the recognized skill set by PMI. Uh, technical project management uh, comes from a couple of the classes, uh, project management for operations managers and advanced project management. Uh, leadership, we have a, uh, leadership classes required. It's uh, uh, leadership principles, and we also have uh, strategic and business management, which, well, there's a multitude of classes. You can pick uh, one from the uh, list of electives. Now, uh, What's the uh, importance or how can a uh, certificate benefit a person? Well, it can help to start or advance your career by learning to execute projects uh, within the scope on budget, 
meeting uh, time objectives, while also creating a competitive advantage given your company's strategic objectives. The certificate validates knowledge of tools, techniques, skills needed to effectively manage pro projects and understanding of the global management uh, language. And it closely follows the project management body of knowledge that helps prepare for a certification exam as a uh, PMP. Uh, the courses are uh, taught. I have to see a couple of the instructors in my session today. They're taught by well-qualified uh, individuals uh, that have a real-world experience in uh, project management. We're getting close to the end. I can feel it. There it is. Closing thoughts, comments, remarks, and questions. If you want more information about the uh, MSOM program, it's at operationsmanagement.uark.edu. You can access courses, course descriptions, course objectives. Uh, you can find site directors. You can find faculty. And I'm going to try since I'm near the end. And if I fail, I won't be bombing too much of this session. I'm going to try to share, go over and access, a little apprehensive, So if you go over to the operations management website, that's operations-management.uark.edu, and you select the academics item near the top, and then you can go down here and select courses and requirements. And then you can go down here to select course descriptions. It will provide a description of all of the MSOM courses. Alternatively, you can get this same information or access this same information uh, in a different way, but it also includes course objectives. So you have a little more information about what the course is going to cover. And to do that, you select resources, then MSOM course descriptions and objectives. So if you selected that, it will load, I think this, yes, PDF, it's a list of all MSOM classes, course description, and course objectives. So that's the, that's probably the easiest way to uh, access courses, course information, as well as course objectives. Now, that being said, I'm going to stop sharing. If all goes well, I will end up back over in the collaborate session. If not, I'll have, uh, well, egg on my face. Last time it took it just a few seconds to recognize that I was back over here, and it there it is. Problem is, what did it do? It threw me back to the beginning of the presentation. I do have, if you are thinking about pursuing uh, one of the certifications, if you're thinking about working on a master's degree, if you're thinking about pursuing a certification in project management, once it becomes available, then uh, the key there, key here is to take action. So my closing thoughts are a couple of quotes from a couple of uh, management gurus. Uh, first is from Peter Drucker, plans are only good intentions unless they immediately de degenerate into hard work. In other words, take action. If you got a plan, plans by themselves are uh, uh, pretty much worthless. Okay. You have to take that first step to execute the plan. Uh, next, from Tom Peters, momentum is a fragile force. Its worst enemy, procrastination. Gosh, that rings true. Its best friend, a deadline. Get to work now. So if this is in your future, you can take uh, Mr. Peters' advice, get to work now. Uh, and another project management guru. Actually, it was an athlete, basketball uh, player. Michael Jordan, some people want it to happen, some wish it would happen, others make it happen. In other words, common thing, if you want to obtain a result, you need to take action to get there. And this is just one that just kind of came to my mind. Uh, plans have little or no value if no action is taken. Results and value are created by taking action to execute the plan. 
Now that being said, I'm ready for any questions, and I, I appreciate Mary Wells. I know she's already fielded some questions, and I am grateful uh, that she uh, has done that. She is one of the uh, PM instructors here in the MSOM department, very well qualified uh, individual. So uh, again, thank you, Mary. So does anyone have any questions uh, that And as soon as this is over, I'm going to have lunch. These really aren't just props. Uh, yes, what's Vince's question? I need to... Uh, uh, propose coursework options. Yes, I can do that. Go backwards through the slides. Whoops, I'm sorry. Three required courses. Yeah. Project management for operations managers. It is required. Right. We refer to the, I refer to that as the foundations course. It lays the foundations for uh, 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 further, more advanced, detailed coursework. Uh, the Advanced Project Management class, it's ONGT 5983, required class. Third one, Leadership Principles and Practices. And uh, as, uh, Dr. Ham is uh, one of the instructors for the leadership class, as well as uh, Dr. Morris. And then you have to choose one elected. Hopefully I've got these correct. If not, uh, Mindy, it's your turn to speak up. Uh, organizing for Change, Cost Estimation Models, uh, economic decision making quality management. Quality management is will be primarily related to measuring and controlling performance or specification requirements of a project. Economic decision making is looking at the economic viability of an uh, investment in a project. Cost estimation models is related to determining uh, uh, cost estimates for a project as well as uh, for both labor and materials, organizing for change is kind of a, I, I, hopefully I, I, I describe it uh, well enough. If not, maybe uh, one of the professors will uh, chime in and add some things, but it's kind of a behavioral cla class in that it looks at how companies, organi organizations must plan for change. It's not just good enough to uh, come up with a plan and or change, but the, it has to be sold to those that are affected by the change. So lots of good classes, lots of good information.